Hi, this is Jim Bergman. I'm out here today at Professional HVACR Services with Mark Law. Uh, he's a graduate of Porter Chester Technical Institute. We came out today to uh, go through some of the new features on the Imperial Eye Manifold application. And uh, the last year we came out here, we set up the system and we benchmarked its performance. And this year I'm going to go over with Mark how we can pull that data down from the cloud, uh, reevaluate the system performance, and see how things are actually operating. So we're going to go ahead and start the iManifold application and uh, you know right now we're getting on the job. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project, tap on the new project. It'll just be a standard verified project but we're going to use the cloud to pull the data back down. So I'm going to tap on use cloud and I'm going to search for equipment near me. So what this does is it goes out through our geotag and looks for equipment within a 2,000 uh, square foot radius of where we're at. So you can see this P PTN 052 for Family Dollar came up here, which is how we profiled the system. We're gonna go ahead and select that unit. When we pull that up, it allows us to verify the location, the equipment, model number, serial number, any notes we have about that as far as uh, what type of a system it is, the condenser, and more importantly, it pulls in the profile of the system. So we can see this is a, a walk-in freezer, 404A, uh, with the standard TXV and it pulls in the design temperature differences from the benchmarks. So th these are the exact design temperature differences that we set the equipment up with initially. So when we start this new project and today we're going to say that we're here for a, a preventative maintenance and submit this data, what this is going to do then is it's going to put the indicators on for us for the uh, pressures and temperatures where they should be when we connect to the I-manifold. So I'm going to go ahead and connect and we, we've had this running for a second here, so all my probes will pull in and we'll, we'll show you the data in just a second. Just to go over a little bit of the setup we have, up here we have uh, a low pressure probe, we have a high pressure probe, we're connected back over here on the liquid line to get the subcooling. High pressure probe, we're connected uh, down below here to get the uh, uh, superheat off the uh, evaporator coil. This is a, a close coupled system, so the, the evaporator is literally right here in the, uh, in the box next to me. Down below I have a uh, temperature probe and supply, a temperature probe and return so we can get the, uh, the box temperatures and then we have over here a couple of uh, TIFF 400A electronic sight glass uh, indicators. We're, they're a sonar device. We're actually using them to look at the uh, for solid column liquid and the liquid line and then any uh, uh, carryover of uh, in the suction line that would indicate we're getting any flooding or refrigerant back. So we're just doing this sort of as a secondary indicator just to watch what's going on. The, the site classes are really handy. It provides us uh, assurance that you know what we're seeing measurement wise is actually what we're getting. It's just a really cool secondary way of, of making sure everything's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so the machine just started up. Um, we're a few degrees off set point here. We'll go ahead and look what our box temperature is. We're at about a zero degree box temp. We're looking for this to be around negative eight to negative 10 when it satisfies. And you can see very quickly that our pressures are falling into the right ranges. Uh, the I-manifold does calculate our targets. So we're gonna go here, uh, scroll through till we get to targets. We're looking for a target suction pressure of about 16, target superheat of 4.1, subcooling of 11.6, and high pressure at 221. The target superheat and target subcooling came from our benchmark when we commissioned this piece of equipment. So we stored that information and now we're looking for it to operate uh, basically the way it was the day that we installed it. So right now what we're waiting for is for the system to stabilize in operation. This is a stability indicator we're looking for a stable liquid line temperature which you can see just went stable and a stable temperature split. With refrigeration equipment, you cannot evaluate the performance of the system until you're close to the box temperature. Uh, if you're um, even probably 10 degrees or more above box temperature, there's just too much load on the box to actually get good readings. So we're now we're able to pull that data down. Now the, the, the key thing here is um, if you're a, uh, a refrigeration technician, you know these numbers look really good to you. If you're an air conditioning technician, uh, at this point, you might be adding gas just to get the suction pressure up to 70 like every other piece of equipment you work on. Uh, and that's the beauty of the I-manifold application. We're showing exactly where that pressure should be, uh, our target, and right now again our target is 16, we're at about 16.1. The box is probably going to be very close to satisfying here pretty quick, but it's, it's allowing us very quickly to see that if things are falling into the right range or not. So we're going to go back to I-manifold for just a minute and see how everything's running. 
Now you can see the system has stabilized. And again, that's a stable temperature split, stable liquid line temp. And everything is operating normally uh, because everything is falling within the design parameters for the high side, low side, high side, superheat, subcooling, and the discharge line temperature is, um, is well below the uh, allowable range. So I'll tap that again to clear that out. Now, another cool thing we can do with this is trending if we want to make sure things are, are stable. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some trends here. And what we're going to trend here, I think, is just the superheat and the subcooling. We'll go ahead and hit submit. You'll notice right away that it not only does it print out the, the, uh, the trend, start trending this, the system, but it also has boxes here. And you'll notice there are two different sizes. This allowable superheat is plus or minus five degrees. Allowable subcooling is plus or minus three degrees. We're within the allowable range of that, so everything's okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit iManifold, and now we're gonna get the, the iManifold screen plus trends so we can watch those as, as they go. If we wanna see what any point is on the graph, we can just tap that, and in this case it's 4.5 degrees of superheat, 4.7 degrees of superheat. Same thing with the subcooling. If you tap this uh, just above that on superheat of subcooling, those uh, boxes will go away. So it's a very quick way of, of visualizing how everything's running and that the system is running just as good the day that we commissioned it as it is, uh, it, just as well today as the day that we commissioned it. Okay, so we're just about ready to, uh, to satisfy the box temperature. Now we might wanna pull this information off for a report. So I'm gonna go back into reporting here and uh, session information, open up, a, open up the ses session information. And at this point here, what I want to do is I want to take a, a snapshot of the equipment performance. So I'll test, take snapshot and that's gathered. I can also capture active weather data for use in some of our advanced reports if we want to do that. And that'll pull in data from a local weather station. And then all that data is tied in. Now we can do a couple other things at this point. We can uh, review our measurements if we want to do that. So you can see our pressures, our temperatures, our air cross, our evaporator, uh, we don't need static on the refrigeration system, but it allows us to pull this in. You can see our voltages that we had, our volts and amps uh, of the uh, system running. Any of the data we might want to look at, and we'll go ahead and submit that again. So all the measurements are, are what we had in the snapshot. We can also view performance. In this case here, there's not a lot on performance because again, this is a refrigeration system, not an air conditioning system. We can see our, our temperature split right now in the box, our dehumidification, um, our EER, dew point in and out, and uh, some other basic information along with our elevation and other uh, performance indicators. And again, we can take another snap, test out snapshot if we'd like to, it'll overwrite that snapshot, but now we can generate a report. So the iManifold reports are free report. We'll go ahead and we're gonna, you can, you can uh, do a report for test in or test out. In this case, we only did a test out snapshot. So I'm gonna go ahead and generate that report. And you can see right away that the readings are verified, meaning that these readings came off the tool. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see those. So we got our pressures, our corresponding saturation temperatures, supplier dry bulbs and wet bulbs, and other information that we gathered off the system performance, as well as some uh, information about how that system is running. So this allows you to, to very quickly generate a report for your customer, a commissioning report, so they know how the system, uh, is, that it's operating the way that it's supposed to. All right, Mark, so we were able to basically pull up a profile from here last year, and now let's say uh, let's say you still aren't sure that, you, you, that the system's operating right. you got to call the office. What would you typically do at this point? Uh, at this point, I would go ahead and I would uh, uh, use a function. Would you? Well, I mean, what would you do typically? I mean, you probably have to get on the phone. And yeah, phone, yeah, phone the company, yeah, talk to one of them. You know, so go through all the readings. All right, so... The other cool feature we got in here is just Tech Connect feature, and uh, what we can do with Tech Connect is we're able to actually stream the data live. So I'm going to go in here and stream my data and just hit start, and uh, you can see now that I'm live on here. And then uh, if Joe's back at the office and he wants to pull this up, then he can just click on my live stream. So he's going to do that over there now, and uh, he can actually view exactly what what I'm viewing in the field. So this allows us to see emulate on both tablets side by side. You can see we've got two different devices here, uh, the exact same readings, yet both of us still have 
control over everything. So I can look through my readings, box temperatures, probes, whatever I want. Joe can look through his readings. He can see everything that I see exactly the same way that it's operating the same way. And he can confirm then that, that it's doing what it's supposed to do. So the machine just shut off. You can see it's a couple seconds behind. We're sending data from my tablet to his tablet about every six seconds. Uh, but it allows him in the office to be able to help walk uh, any of the service technicians he's got through a problem without having to, to go through step-by-step step and, and talk about readings over the phone. It's a, a much more powerful way of communicating. So Mark, you got about 18 months of schooling under your belt, maybe a year or so in the field, and I know you just started here and, and uh, just getting trying to get an idea of how utilizing this technology, what you saw today, compares to what you did at school and, and how you think it might benefit you. Well, Porter says they actually prepared me for uh, this type of technology, being as that they issue the iPads to their students, and we actually use the iPads while in school for uh, our labs, uh, videotaping them, doing our labs online, and stuff like that. So the transition to this is, is it'll definitely be helpful. And what do you think it's going to do for you? You know, is your is your you know because you're, obviously you're still learning. Everybody still is probably for the next. 10 years, if not your lifetime in this industry, but how do you think this is gonna benefit you moving forward as far as being able to work confidently on your own and, and make sure you're doing your job right every day? Well, once we, I, I have the capability to set this system up, I mean, uh, once you benchmark a project, is you can just take your readings, uh, compare them to what they should be, uh, it would definitely uh, increase the time that, uh, or decrease the time to actually spent on jobs. So, yeah. yeah, so the, you know, and that's really what we're trying to do here. With benchmarking the system performance, we can take the, 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 the lead technician, the expert technician out in the field, set the equipment up once, provide a benchmark then for, uh, you know, even, even a newer technician to come out and very quickly ascertain whether the equipment's running right. And again, you know, the, the fact that uh, Mark had the, the, the training he did at the school he went to, was able to, to already be versed in using technology, transitioning this technology was a, was a real easy, uh, was a real easy feat for him. So I think as we go through and uh, generate this next generation of technicians and get these guys going, this is gonna be really second nature to these guys in the field, so. But anyway, we just wanted to give you a little bit of a primer about what we're doing, how to use the benchmarking, troubleshooting, uh, what we can do with the application and uh, give you an idea how quickly we can get a technician up to speed in the industry with the iManifold. Uh, this is Jim Bergman and Mark uh, with Professional HVCR Services. Uh, and uh, we just wanted to say thanks for watching and uh, have a good night. Mm -hmm.